wonder, do you believe that? Do you believe that all is well? I said, do you believe that all is well? Lift that hand and say, yes, I'm a believer. to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. All is well and it will be all right. I want you to keep that in your spirit. Somebody ought to type it for me in the comments right now. All is well and it will be all right, we welcome you into the sacred place that we call sanctuary where God is exalted, the devil is defeated, and we have the victory. Thank you for joining us this evening in our Wednesday night recharge. Wherever you are that you're viewing this, whether it's morning, noon, evening, or night, we thank God for you taking time with, out of your busy schedule to be with us at this appointed time. We're praying for you. And I hope that you are praying for us. We believe in the power of prayer and we are all standing in the need of prayer. I hope somebody is praying for me. Would you put my name in the comments, please? I need your prayers and my faith is connecting to your faith and whatever it is that we desire from the Lord. I believe that God will do it for you today. Amen. Somebody ought to holler today. God is going to do it for you today. Be encouraged. I want you to stay encouraged knowing that whatever it is that we need from the Lord, God is able to exceed our expectations. As I was in the word of God this week, my mind began to go to a familiar person in the Bible by the name of David. David is mentioned more in the Bible only behind Jesus because David's life gives us a whole lot of parameters to go by as we travel through this journey that we call life. And so David, he had many struggles, many battles. He went through many failures. David had a whole lot to happen and go on in his life. But what I love about David is that he stayed faithful to God. And I want to tell you that tonight. Stay faithful to God. Somebody type that for me, please. Stay faithful to God. He knew how to stay spiritually strong even when his trials and his tests were overwhelming. And so one of the worst days of his life we find it is described in 1 Samuel chapter 30 when the Amalekites raided his camp at Ziglag, and these terrorists, they kidnapped all of the women and the children and torched the city and looted everything. That story ought to sound a little familiar to you right now. And so to make matters worse, David's own warriors, they, they blamed him for this disaster, and they were so angry with him. They were angry that they talked about stoning him. And so this type of pressure can trigger a nervous breakdown. And many of us are under pressure right now. This type of pressure can trigger an angry outburst. This type of pressure can trigger an abrupt resignation. But David, he did not quit. And even when his friends had turned against him, 1 Samuel 30 and 6 says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And that's what I want to tell you tonight. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. Now, how, how did he do that? Now, the Bible really does not give us 
in its specifics, but all that we know is that after he found that supernatural strength, the battle turned and David and his army, they chased down those raiders and slaughtered them and recovered everything that had been stolen. And so watch this, a really bad day actually turned into an astounding victory. And that's why I want you to have your mindset right now. Even if you're having bad moments or your situation is not the best, God is going to use that for his glory and get ready for it to turn around for victory in your life. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. And I know, I know that many have been traumatized by certain events that are going on in this world right now. Oh, these past few years and stress, stress has the power to derail us. And I cannot say that I have faced anything as traumatic as the Amalek raid, or, but I have learned a few secrets through some of the tests and trials in my life. I have learned some things to find encouragement encouragement during some of my most difficult moments. And I want to share that with you because you got to learn how to encourage yourself. So the first thing that we should always do is you ought to take a praise break. I want you to type that for me, please. You got to learn how to take a praise break. Hallelujah. No matter where you are, you can always give him glory. You can always take the time out to praise the Lord. So the first thing you got to do is take a praise break. And we are reminded of when Paul and Silas found themselves in chains in that jail that the Bible lets us know that they sang hymns and praises to God until everything was shaken and rocked that building and their shackles fell off. And so we know that praise has power. I want you to type that for me, please. Praise has power power. And brother David, he knew this at his ancient songs. They provide the playlist for a lot of our breakthroughs on today. He wrote in Psalms 27, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. Hallelujah. I know sometimes people around you think that you're shouting too much and you're shouting too loud, but they have no idea of what you have had to endure or even the pressures that life are putting upon you right now. And so you got to learn how to give God glory even when you don't feel like it. Why, preacher? Because praise resets our souls and it unlocks heaven's answer. Glory be to God. I need somebody to type that for me, please. Praise resets our souls and unlocks heaven's answer. Hallelujah. So when you need to be recharged, you got to give God some glory. Give him some praise for his goodness and his mercies with your hands lifted up. Hallelujah. And your mouth filled with praise with a heart of thanksgiving. Glory be to God. I will bless thee, oh Lord. I'll bless the Lord at all times. Somebody ought to help me through that. And his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. So when you got to encourage yourself, the first thing you ought to do is take the time out to have a praise break. The second thing is that you must learn to withdraw from stress. I want you to type that, please. Withdraw from stress the stress. You got to learn how to take a break. You got to learn how to withdraw from stressful situations. Why? Because you cannot stay in the heat of battle day after day. So you got to learn how to withdraw. You have to learn how to rest and recharge. You got to unstring that bow and you got to relax and maybe you should take a walk or sit outside and drink you a cup of tea or something. I don't know. Whatever it is that you do to relax, you got to learn how to withdraw from the stress. One of the things I can say to you, maybe you ought to turn the phone off sometimes. Maybe you ought to turn some of these electronic things off sometimes. You got to learn 
whatever it is that you do for relaxation, you got to learn how to withdraw from the stress. And while you are in reset mode, you got to remind yourself that God is fighting your battles for you. My God, my God. Come on, would somebody type that, please? God is fighting for me. Yes, God is fighting your battles while you reset. The next thing I want to tell you is that when you encourage yourself, you have to recall moments of God's goodness. Would you type that, please? Recall moments of God's goodness. David wrote in Psalms 103, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, and forget not his benefits. You cannot forget what God has done for you. And so when you are tempted, yes, because temptation comes to us all, when you are tempted to doubt God's faithfulness, you got to remember all of the moments that he has answered your prayers in the past. And I want you to get excited. Why? Because the same God, who helped you years ago, that same God who was there for you a few months ago, that same God who worked a miracle for you last week, he can do it again. Hallelujah. It's going to repeat again. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to get excited. I said it's getting ready to repeat again. Hit the repeat button because get ready for God to perform a miracle in your life if he provided for you last year, he'll do it again. Why? Because God has not changed. Yes, Lord, I got to think back over my life. Hallelujah. And when you think things over, you can truly say that you are blessed and you have a testimony. Hallelujah. Didn't make it on your own, but somebody prayed me through. Glory be to God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Are you looking for a miracle? Are you expecting the impossible? Recall the goodness of God in your life. Don't forget to remember. I need somebody to type that in all capital letters for me, exclamation point. Don't forget to remember. But sometimes, yes, you got to encourage yourself. The next thing you have to do is you got to make sure that you stand on the promise that God has already made you. Stand on the promise that God has already made to you. Now, Timothy, he must have had some bad moments when he pastored the church in Ephesus because he was probably tempted to quit many times because of a lot of demonic resistance, because he could not get cooperation in certain things. And that is why the Apostle Paul told him to fight the good fight using the prophecies that have been made concerning you. And I want somebody to get this in your spirit. I'm telling you right now, I need you to type this in all capital letters. Fight the good fight. My God, my God. Keep fighting. You fight on. Oh, my, my. I said, you got to fight on. Fight the good fight. And even there are moments when I, myself, when I face discouragement, I'm going through, I can often recall the prophetic promises that God has made me in the past. And these words are like anchors that hold me steady through the seas. And, and they also boast up my faith. Yeah, sometimes you got to remember, you got to understand the promise that God has already given you, and it'll help boost your faith so that you can gain a second win. Glory be to God. I don't know who needs to hear me say that, but get ready to get your second win. Yes, Lord, the year is not over yet. I want you to take a deep breath and get your second win because we're going to finish strong. Somebody type that for me, please. I need my second win to finish strong. Hallelujah. So you have to speak God's promises out loud and you'll feel yourself being lifted above any situation. When you encourage yourself, you got to say to yourself, Lord, this is not what you promised me. You promised me that I'd be above and beneath. You promised me that I'd be a 
above and not beneath. You promise these things to me. You promise that you will supply all of my need. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. The last thing I want to tell you is that when you encourage yourself, you got to remember godly advice. Mm. I want you to type that, please. Remember godly advice. Yes, yeah, some things that people say to us is not expedient. It's not for the uplifting of our spirit, but you got to learn to remember godly advice. And so in David's story, he had a close friend by the name of Jonathan who encouraged him on more than one occasion. And in 1 Samuel chapter 23, Jonathan, who was Saul's son, he arose and he went to David and he encouraged him in the Lord. And I suspect that Jonathan's comforting words must have lingered in David's soul long after he had spoken it to them. Because when David encouraged himself in the Lord, he could have been meditating on what Jonathan had said some months prior. And let me tell you this, I am grateful anytime somebody takes the time out of their busy schedule to give me an uplifting text message or an email or a phone call just to make sure that I'm okay or to let me know that God is on my side, to let me know, to remind me of even some of the things that I say, that the victory is our lifestyle. I hold that dear to my heart and I appreciate anybody who feels the need to help me in that area to make sure that I stay encouraged. And it means a lot. Yes, Lord. So you got to remember when you get godly advice. So even in this moment, you got to encourage yourself. Don't faint. Don't be weary in your world doing because in due season, you're going to reap if you faint not. So please, ma'am, please, sir, brothers and sisters, don't faint. Don't quit. You got to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. And so if you can hold on and grab to some of these tips and habits that David showed us, you're going to be strengthened to fight every battle of your life. Hallelujah. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, just like David, we need your encouragement in a time of trial and anguish. God, we thank you even now that you are always on the throne, always our God, and you are ready to save and rescue us at any moment. God, we thank you for being the same God to us that you were to David. God, we thank you for always being near and always pulling us through, pulling us out of our fears and our hurts. And Lord, in this moment, fill us with hope that daybreak is coming and that your love will always prevail, knowing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. God, we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and thank God. To God be the glory for the things that he has done, what he's doing in our lives right now. We hope that something was said to keep you encouraged for such a time as this and make sure that you are encouraging yourself in the Lord. I want to extend an invitation to you tonight to join us Sunday morning at 11 a.m. This week we'll be in pink as we give reverence to um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And you know some people who have had that. Some people are dealing with it right now. So we want to make sure that these people are not forgotten, that they are recognized through our stand in unity as we dress in our pink. The announcements will be on the screen in just a moment. And we want you to come out and join us this Saturday at 10 a.m. We'll be having a breast cancer walk. Um, and those things will be on the screen. So make sure you pay attention to those announcements. We're getting excited. Because soon and very soon, Can if the Lord delays is coming, we will be celebrating 20 years, 20 years in ministry. The God that we serve has been so kind, has been so loving to us. He's extended his grace to us 
to even fight through the difficult moments. God is good all the time, and all the time, he is good. God bless you. Love you with the love of Christ. Yes, it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He would surely do the same for you. Have faith in God. And don't forget to remember, I hope you encourage tonight, but you got to encourage yourself. Hallelujah. Speak over yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're praying even now that, Lord, do it for me right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord continue to watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. And until the next appointed time, we hope to see you real soon. But until that time, let the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. In Jesus' name, amen.